Aloha and good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to This Is Now. Let's start with another live look on Kauai Southside. It is a first alert weather day. Reason being, there is some severe weather that is about to hit the Garden Isle. Aloha, I'm Dylan Anchetta. And I'm Ashley Nagaoka. Joining us now is meteorologist Drew Davis. Now, Drew, taking a look at the radar, it looks pretty messy out there. What yeah. can we expect? Yeah, we've got heavy rainfall moving over towards the Garden Isle as we're going forward throughout the rest of today. We do have a flood watch up just for Kauai throughout this evening all the way into this upcoming Friday. You can see that on our map right here. We have the flood watch up and then advancing further towards the radar. It's a little bit active out there. We do have some rainfall moving into the middle of the state and out west. You can see a lot of heavy rainfall and even some thunderstorms. We're picking up some lightning strikes on the radar and satellite. So as we're going forward over the next couple hours, we're going to start to see more intense rainfall coming down over Kauai. Heavy rainfall expected to just stall over the island going forward throughout the rest of this evening. And this band of moisture is going to be impacting the state throughout the weekend and it's going to be slowly moving eastward by the time we get to this upcoming Saturday and Sunday. So you can see moving closer, not much over Oahu or parts of Maui County, relatively quiet out there. Some upper level moisture getting picked up on the radar and satellite as well. Our focus going forward throughout the rest of today is the island of Kauai. Taking a look at the Pacific weather pattern, we've got this high pressure system weakening, giving us these southeasterly winds that we've been tracking. And the reason we're seeing all this heavy rainfall is because of a low pressure system developing off to our northwest and a very weak cold front picking up a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So heavy rains expected for Kauai. We've got flood watches up. And of course, like we're seeing on the radar right now, Thunderstorms are possible throughout this evening and all the way into tomorrow morning as well. The main thing that we're tracking going into this weekend, the models disagree on how far east the rain is going to move. So we'll see this band of moisture advance further eastward throughout Saturday and Sunday. A little bit of a drop off um, in the rainfall going into Saturday, but you see it kind of just stalls around Kauai throughout Saturday evening. Not as much rainfall for the rest of the state, but by the time we get to this upcoming Sunday, it starts to move further eastward. And we're going to continue tracking this system around the clock. Make sure to download the Hawaii News Now First Alert weather app. We're going to be putting a lot of good information on it throughout the rest of this afternoon and evening. Drew Davis, thank you so much for that forecast. All right, now to other news. O.J. Simpson, the legendary football player, made infamous during a sensational murder trial died Wednesday at the age of 76. Now, in a statement on his social media accounts, his family said he succumbed to his battle with cancer. Bradley Blackburn looks back at his life. O.J. Simpson's fame and infamy spanned across decades. As a star running back at USC, Simpson won the Heisman Trophy in 1968. Nicknamed the Juice, he played 11 seasons in the NFL, first with the Buffalo Bills, then the San Francisco 49ers. After retiring from the league, he launched a successful career as a sports broadcaster, movie star, and ad pitchman. You know. But in June 1994, millions watched police chase Simpson in his white Bronco on LA's freeways. His ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman were found stabbed to death. Simpson was accused of their murders. Alan Dershowitz was part of his star legal team. There was overwhelming evidence that might suggest that he did it, and then there was one piece of evidence that was tampered with. With cameras in the courtroom, Simpson's trial became a global television event. And of course, the infamous moment was the day he tried on the glove, and that the glove did not fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. A jury found him not guilty. I remember when the verdict came out and the street split. 
There were black citizens on one side and white on the other, and people were seeing justice through different eyes. But in a civil lawsuit from the victims' families, Simpson was found liable and ordered to pay millions in damages. More than a decade later, his book, If I Did It, garnered headlines. A 2007 Las Vegas robbery and kidnapping over sports memorabilia landed him in prison. He was paroled in 2017. His family says Simpson was surrounded by his children and grandchildren when he died. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Condolences continue to pour in for sumo legend Ake Bono, who passed away after a long health battle. At six foot eight and nearly 500 pounds, Waimanalo native Chad Rowan was larger than life in Hawaii and Japan. Jolani Martinez has more. People have been leaving flowers and lays at this life-size statue of Akebono on Royal Hawaiian Avenue in Waikiki. We spoke with those who knew the sumo grand champion on and off the doyo. Chad Rowan left his hometown of Waimanalo at age 18, eager to adapt to the new sport in Tokyo. Well, people used to tell me how tough it was, um, how hard it was going to be. Um, when I first got here, I, I realized what the people told me is actually 10 times harder than what they did tell me. Five years later, he earned the name Akebono and was the first non-Japanese wrestler to become Yokozuna, the sport's highest honor. He would go on to win 11 titles with more than 560 match victories. He was immortalized as one of Hawaii's three gentle giants and performed in the opening ceremony at the 1998 Olympics in Nagano. Former KGMB sports anchor Neil Everett knew him before he was famous. You could be anybody in the world except Ake Bono, who would you be? I don't know, that's a tough question, but I think I would like to go back to Hawaii and be who I was before I came up here. He was as big as they come, literally and figuratively. And, uh, you know, he's just a, he was a he was he was a nice kid in a grand champions uh, wardrobe. And it was it was fa it was fascinating and uh, exhilarating. If he can get his arm straight on you, super aggressive. I don't care if you're Superman, you're going to lose that match. Kenna Heffernan, president of the Aloha State Sumo Association, got to train with Akebono and says he paved the way for aspiring sumo wrestlers in Hawaii. And whether it's to get into the collegiate levels or to get on the pro levels, um, he, again, he was always thinking about the kids. I think I'm still in shock. Um, I, don't, I haven't really put my, my brain around that part of it, but it's just gonna, it just goes back to all the great things that I was able to share with him. Governor Josh Green released a statement calling Akebono an ambassador for Hawaii. And former Honolulu Mayor Mufi Hanneman still remembers his hospitality. Always available for us whenever I took a delegation there to promote tourism, to promote trade and investment. Uh, and he never forgot his roots. So this gentle giant from Waimanalo will be missed greatly. Akebono retired in 2001 after several injuries. He'd been battling health issues for the last seven years and was recently admitted to a Tokyo hospital where he died of heart failure at age 54. Back in Waikiki, the restaurateur who bought this life-size statue says Akebono was a hero who leaves a lasting legacy. It was way too soon. I think there was a lot left in him. But I think he gave a lot during his lifetime and he was a, a bridge for these cultures of, of Hawaii and Japan and the U.S. Jolani Martinez, Hawaii News Now. The former interpreter for Shohei Otani faces a federal charge after allegedly stealing more than $16 million from the baseball superstar. Ipe Mizuhara allegedly made unauthorized transfers from Otani's bank account from November 2021 to January 2024. Authorities say Mizuhara, a longtime friend of Otani's, took advantage of their close relationship to finance his illegal sports betting addiction. Hawaii Island police continue their efforts to keep fentanyl off the streets. In March, officers say they recovered an amount of fentanyl that could kill more than 50,000 people. In total, there were seven fentanyl-related arrests across the county last month. Police warn that the drug networks are mixing the synthetic opioid with illegal counterfeit pills 
and selling them as legitimate prescription pills. And the consequences are reaching epidemic proportions. Mary Lair has been identified as the woman who died after an attack in Waikiki. Police found the 81-year-old seriously hurt last Wednesday while responding to a burglary and assault call at the Ainahau Vista Complex. A 73-year-old man who lives in the complex was arrested but released pending investigation. An investigation by an online publication is revealing that some military child care centers are slow to report abuse and have little oversight. Military.com is focusing on a child abuse case first reported by Hawaii News Now. Mahilani Richardson has more. The article points to a pattern of failures and the Pentagon struggling to staff its daycares. In its investigation, Military.com looked at the child abuse case of 15-month-old Isabella Kirkendall and other cases at military child care centers. Its headline, Unsupervised, Military Child Care Centers Slow to Report Abuse with Little Oversight. Hawaii News Now first reported the case when parents Army Captain J.D. and Kate Kirkendall spoke out about the bruises they found on their daughter in 2022 after they dropped her off at the Navy's Child Development Development Center on Ford Island at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. Later on surveillance video, JD says he saw pinches and hits to Isabella's back and head. I just feel like I couldn't imagine this happened to Isabella and knowing what happened to Isabella if I didn't stand up and if Jeremy didn't say stand up and say something and fight as hard as we have. It would have just been a continuous cycle. HNN was there as daycare workers Anna Linda Guzman was sentenced to 30 days in jail, while Marilyn Kanekoa got eight days after they pleaded no contest to third degree assault. Military.com reported, quote, no official police or command reports were filed on the day law enforcement responded to the first report of potential abuse. The daycare failed to properly document the injuries or to tell the parents the full scope of what happened aside from the story that Bella had been crying. The Kirkendalls claim that in their January meeting last year with Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam Garrison leaders and the Judge Advocate General Office, quote, base leadership acknowledged the overall failures of the reporting system, but ultimately placed the blame not on the policy, but on individuals and on the Honolulu Police Department. Having that out now um, helps bring uh, awareness to the issue we've been dealing with mostly internally, uh, i.e. fighting through bureaucracy to try to get processes to do the right thing uh, within the system. And, and it's been such a frustrating and difficult experience. In statements, the Pentagon said, in part, gaining and maintaining the trust of our service members and their families is sacred. While the Navy installation command leader in Hawaii said, quote, incidents are rare. The Navy takes swift action to report and thoroughly review each incident against our own policies, practices, and staffing to prevent future occurrences, hold violators accountable, and provide the safest care environment possible. While the two defendants were sentenced, the Kirkendalls say they're not done seeking accountability and justice for their daughter. I'm Mahalani Richardson, Hawaii News Now. An investigation into a popular pre-packed lunch aimed at children is raising concerns. Consumer Reports is asking school cafeterias to stop serving children Lunchables. The Watchdog Group tested a dozen versions of the lunch kits, which contained prepackaged meats, cheese, and crackers. It found several contained high levels of lead and cadmium, the heavy metals can cause developmental issues even in small doses. The study also found concerning amounts of sodium as well as phthalates, chemicals used in plastic packaging, that are also known hormone disruptors. Last year, after changing some of the nutritional content, Lunchables were allowed in the National School Lunch Program for the first time. They are served to tens of millions of children. In a scathing assessment, Consumer Reports said the government should be ensuring school kids have a healthier option. A groundbreaking was held yesterday for an $80 million expansion project at the newly named Hilo Benioff Medical Center. It's now named after Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff and his wife, who donated $50 million to match $50 million in state funding. The ICU will be rebuilt with 19 beds, and the facility will get another floor with 36 more beds. 
There will also be a family birthing center and a neurosurgical program. People, when they need intensive care treatment, will not have to seek a transport. That care will be right here, either just over the mountain or just around the corner. It's an unprecedented investment in our local community that we so badly need. We're expanding the safety net. This is where we're going to save our parents' lives, our kapuna. This is where our children will be born and continue to be born. And and I'm confident we're going to get it done. Benioff says he first visited Hawaii 50 years ago. This is the hospital's first major expansion since it opened in 1986. The work is expected to take two years. And now to a fun event that took place yesterday. It involved special needs students from four Oahu high schools. They focused on promoting love, inclusion, and unity. Under the jumbotron of a transformed Stan Sheriff Arena, some 150 special needs students from four Honolulu high schools danced the day away at Unity Prom 2024. They were treated to the full prom experience with prom photos, ono food, and even a red carpet. They're going to walk the red carpet, right, to enter a magical dance floor that's been transformed. And um, hopefully they walk away with a lifetime of memories. We're so happy that we can provide this for, you know, they're really the heart and soul of our campus, which is our special needs population. Um, they bring so much to the, to the table as far as love and acceptance and how we as, you know, typical adults and students should love our, you know, our fellow human beings. What started in the cafeteria of Kaimuki High School seven years ago has grown and includes partners like the Ho'ea Foundation and even UH Athletic. Rainbow Wahine volleyball coach Robin Amo Santos has a child with special needs and sees immense value in events like this. I think it's a good thing for just the UH athletes to see, you know, there's, there's other things out there besides just, you know, them and like playing football and, you know, other people, you know, they have a hard time. And just being here, like I said, for five, ten minutes and just brightening up, it's just having that one spark for, you know, these kids, you know, in their, their one day that I can, they can celebrate. Right now, four schools participate in this event and organizers are hoping more will join in the coming year. We're celebrating a message of unity, love and inclusion. And I think when you start with those three words, I mean, that's magic at that point. Dylan and Chetta, Hawaii News Now. A wonderful event indeed. Let's take you live outside one more time. It is a first alert weather day for the island of Kauai as heavy rains are set to move in. Stay with us. We'll have more news after this short break.
President Biden kicked off a lavish state visit for Prime Minister Kishida on Wednesday and reaffirmed that the U.S.-Japan alliance is stronger than it's ever been. Christy Lou Stout reports. The leaders of the U.S. and Japan are hailing a new era of strategic cooperation that sends a clear message to China. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida for a state visit, an honor to underscore Japan's importance with a focus on the Indo-Pacific region. Now, they announced a range of moves to enhance military, economic and technological cooperation. This was the fifth official state visit of the Biden White House and the fourth dedicated to a key Indo-Pacific ally. Now, Japan has been at the center of Biden's alliance building in the Indo-Pacific. Kushida has pledged to increase defense spending by 2 percent of GDP by 2037 and has acquired American Tomahawk missiles. He's also provided ongoing support to Ukraine. And on Wednesday, the two leaders announced measures to further deepen the U.S.-Japan alliance. New steps were announced on trade and economic ties, diplomacy, climate change, space exploration. In fact, a Japanese astronaut will be the first non-American to travel with NASA to the moon. Uh, critical technologies like AI. Officials say that there will be a joint AI research initiative between Carnegie Mellon and Keio University and defense. Defense, a key takeaway here. In fact, around 70 agreements on defense cooperation were made, including moves to upgrade military command structures to boost coordination. On the back of recent maritime aggression, the U.S. and its allies, including Japan, see China as a growing threat in the region. Here's the Japanese prime minister. We reaffirm the importance of realizing a free and open Indo-Pacific based on the rules of law and concurred to maintain close collaboration through various opportunities, including the Japan-U.S.-Philippine summit, which is planned for Thursday. On Thursday in the U.S., Biden will also host the first-ever leader summit between the U.S., Japan and the Philippines. It's part of Biden's wider strategy to draw Asian allies closer together and offset China's growing might. Christy Lu Stout, CNN, Hong Kong. Measles cases are on the rise and that could result in a change of its classification. The CDC says there's been more than 100 cases of measles in the U.S. since January. According to a report Thursday, officials say if there's a major spread, measles could lose its elimination status. In the year 2000, measles was officially eliminated, which means there have been no outbreaks for at least a 12-month period. However, from 2020 through March of this year, more than 300 cases were confirmed in the U.S. Numerous outbreaks came from under-vaccinated areas in some New York City communities. Measles is very contagious, and a vaccine is encouraged by the CDC to prevent the spread. Measles can be fatal, especially for children, but lesser symptoms include fever, cough, and rashes. Now to a story out of Kansas where customers of a bakery are being asked to chew with caution after the baker fears that she lost something valuable in the dough of some cookies. Alan Soff has more on her pleas to customers. I look down at my hand and the center diamond is gone. Workers at Sis Sweets in Leavenworth put on and take off more than 119,000 rubber gloves every year, but never had this happen. Banging the bowls and the pans. A wedding ring from nearly four decades ago chosen by her husband, now missing the main headpiece diamond. So we kind of went back to the kitchen and looked around. But the huge diamond was gone. I was crying and all he could say is, you still have me. So. <laughs> I, that made it all better. This says somewhere between rolling dough and making cookies on Friday, the center diamond dropped into the dough. It's 36 years on this hand. She says they've narrowed the search to either chocolate chip, sugar, or peanut butter cookies, and they put out a plea to their customers. Use caution before biting into one. Mainly because I didn't want anybody to break a tooth. Sis says she hopes to find the diamond, but she acknowledges if she doesn't, she'll just have to replace it because she says the ring is far too valuable to her to take off her finger. I cried. <laughs> I cried a lot. But four days later, later, no luck. So while Sis Sweets continues to pump out the pastries, they're still holding out hope. The missing diamond will show up and she says, who knows, there might be a ton of free cookies for anyone that finds but it. I would definitely make it worth your while bringing it back. In today's good news now, there's late and then there's really, really late. And still, some people say better late than never. Jennifer Meckles has the story of a library book that was due more than 100 years ago. And that's one of the 
magic things about books and literature, right? Of all the stories waiting on these shelves. It doesn't matter how many decades or centuries pass, it can still be relevant to the right reader that's looking for something. Hooter Libraries just discovered a story still untold. This is Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott. No, not the classic novel Ivanhoe, but the story behind this copy, shared by the library's Anna Claire Crumpton. It was checked out three times, three stamps, before it went missing. The last checkout? 105 years ago. February 13th, 1919. 105 years later, um, someone turned it in. So here it is. <laughs> it came to us from an unnamed woman uh, who it was passed along from her brother who found it in their mom's belongings um, in Kansas. Still intact? Yes. Loved? Absolutely. And it's been annotated and well loved, so you wonder how many, you know, generations it went through, how many parents to kids, yeah. um, you know, loved this copy of, of Ivanhoe. Back in 1919, the old Fort Collins Public Library, the building behind this one, charged two cents a day for overdue books. And we'll adjust it for inflation, and it's around $14,000. <laughs> Late fines. We don't do fines anymore. We're fine freeze. No penalties here. Just one more story to add to the shelf. Absolutely. We celebrate the magic of books and it's even more magic when it's more than 100 years old, but we're surrounded by them all the time um, and they're very precious. Thank you for watching. This is now more news first at four on KHNL. Aloha. Aloha.